Oh, right. Fine. So different, it's like, well, good morning, everybody, here and here. It's like, oh, it's so good. Okay, where'd your pick go, Rod? Right here. Oh, uh, well, you know, stand or sit or, I mean, if you want to kneel, uh, you know, like little children, you can sit down, enjoy. <laughs> But good to see you, Mel. Good to see those of you who are beginning to log on and um, just, yeah, still good to just fellowship in the in the Lord, see people face to face, and and uh, good to have the technology, obviously, just uh, where you're at at home. But yeah, let's just worship the Lord and uh, connect with Him. Spirit of God, we love you and thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for who you are, and not just for what you've done, which we're super grateful for, but even what you're doing now. Thank you for being so present, and Father, thank you for the gift of your love. Uh, we love you, Godhead, Daddy God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. We just, we say worthy, we sing worthy, we want our hearts and minds to be just zeroed in on you. Lord, help us to be, just to be present with you, connect with you, in Jesus' name. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring.
so worthy God you're so holy you're so good <laughs> you're all of the above and you're above and beyond that's the kind of kind of work you display God Lord just stir our faith stir our hearts stir our our passion and love our, our affections just for you and toward you and I know there's some brothers and sisters out there here and those tuning in on, on Facebook, God, that we're all troubled and maybe we're dealing with different levels of trouble, God, different kinds of trials, but we fix our hearts on you and we, we want to magnify you, God, the above and beyond, God. You're so worthy. You're so holy. You're the great and mighty everything, God. Mm. So thank you. Lord, we just thank you. Continue to just bless and heal Wendy, Lord. Alan and Kule, where they're at, Jesus. Lord, touch them. Lord, the Burgess Ohana, Pastor John in San Diego, and found out he's dealing with double pneumonia and COVID. Just ask that those medicines and everything would work together for healing. Be the great and mighty giver. Go ahead and just lift up those that that you're lifting up. I was just with uh, the Harris, uh, uh, Harris Chang and Shannon, and Ohana and Grandma. Uh, we just pray, we lift them up to you. Just go ahead and just mention those names. Just whisper those names to the Lord. Thank you for Uncle George. You care, God, you care for him. So thank you for your touch upon him and the ringing in his ear, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just want to pause and if just where you're at, uh, just at home, but I know we're, we're kind of tuning in. I mean, that's a, kind of the, I trust the benefit of our, of our gathering. I right? just, uh, a, a focus. Uh, but where you're at at home, just if there's a word, if there's a scripture, share that with who you're at. And if there's any, any, any word of encouragement here, any scripture, any thought, uh, it's the body of Christ thing. So I was walking the dogs this morning and it's like, God help. I don't want everyone to depend on, yeah, just feel the weight of shepherding. And there's a good weight of responsibility. So I want to take it, I want to steward it. When it comes to, you know, just life, right? And wherever you're at, what, what can tend to be overwhelming? Is there a word, a, a thought, so it doesn't depend just on me? We're the body of Christ. And what's the Lord saying? What's the Lord stirring? So if there's something, good to see you guys. Any word, one word, if it's a scripture, speak it out. Go ahead at home too. Like, what's, what's the Lord saying? Uh, just right there, it's just you and the Lord. What's he dropping in your heart? What's that word of encouragement? What's... What's the, what's the call? What's the conviction? Jesus, continue to prepare Ezekiel's heart as he transitions to South Dakota, Lord Jesus. Stir his heart, Lord Jesus. Bless Ben and Yoshna and their, their trip, Lord. It's refresh them, Jesus. Any word as we just pause? Any word. Janice, speak it out. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. Amen. Not by might, power, by his spirit, by his spirit, by your spirit, God. Show us where we're laboring a little too much on our own. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you for that word, Lord. Thank you for that word. It's by your spirit. Lord, we cast our cares, our burdens on you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh. 
Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. And through all the storms, you are Lord, Lord of stirring in us. And I believe uh, Mel and I have prepared best we can to share your word, break what's on our hearts. But what are you speaking, Holy Spirit? What are you speaking? I've asked Shawnee to come and just share a, uh, just share a word with the Lord stirring. I don't know what she's going to share, but it's going to be good. <laughs> but I just feel that, yeah, it's a, a stirring of the Lord. So, yeah. Um, morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Um, I was just thinking about today and the message on uh, just building a genuine and authentic life mm. in Christ, and um, just going along with the theme of building with Ezra and Nehemiah. Um, just thinking about building as we build our genuine and authentic lives in Christ. Um, not every brick or decision, like I referenced a couple weeks ago, not every decision we make is going to be perfect, right? Yeah, it's true, yeah. um, it's good. But when we ratchet, ratchet back to the cornerstone, who um, is Christ in our life, I think that every decision with repetition of the fruit of, fruit of the Spirit will be um, contributing to building our authenticity and our genuineness. Um, and it's it, it's not about acting or doing as much. I think growing up in the church or being a part of the church, a lot of times we can be kind of jaded by, oh, we have to do this to look this way. So people will think we're genuine or think <laughs> that we're authentic. Um, I think that we we are motivated by shame a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the church's fault. I think it's the, the fault of sin in our lives. Um, sin nature that the devil has stirred up for us. Um, but I think when Christ is our motivator and Christ is, is a strength behind our decisions instead of shame, uh, then the fruit of the Spirit can come into play. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, self-control. Um, just think about which one of those you need the most of. Uh, or if you're like me, maybe you need all of them a ton. Um, and it can be overwhelming to, to think about, do I have a genuine and authentic life in Christ? Um, I think I struggle with that sometimes. Like, I'm doing these things, I'm trying to live for Christ, but in certain moments, you know, uh, it's difficult to actually be in that place. But I think as, with repetition, with the fruit of the Spirit, with Jesus as our motivator and our strength and shame aside, um, we can have genuine and authentic lives in Christ. Even with our imperfect decisions, our imperfect bricks that are building our life, we can still have that genuine, authentic life in Christ. And so I hope that encourages someone, it encouraged me as just, I was just sitting, you know, my 29 lot, uh, years of experience, so wise, so, so, cool, you know, just thinking about You're all the wisdom, cool? yeah, 29, um, no, I'm, I'm joking, uh, just thinking about all that I think that I know, sometimes, all that I think that I've 
got down and then just in a, in a split second I can be humbled by a bad decision that I make but reminded uh, no authenticity and genuineness is um, is is mine in Christ and so yeah um, yeah just excited to hear what you and Mel have to share today and uh, you took our message huh? <laughs> no it's dovetailing dovetailing <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and, yeah, pray. Just pray. Yeah. pray that in, okay. into us. Pray it over us. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Um, dear Jesus, thank you so much for this church and um, this body uh, that you've just given for each one of us to be um, just edified, Lord, and encouraged yeah. and um, built up for you and for your glory, Lord. Um, I pray that, you know, in our deepest, darkest moments for each of us, whether that's an attitude thing or an attention thing, um, something that's replacing you in our lives, Lord, would you just, would you just take that and allow us to uh, just choose you, Lord? Uh, we want to glorify you. I believe that New Hope Manoa is a place where you are being glorified, Lord, so would we just uh, take that into every part of our lives, not just here when we're all together having a great time just loving you and worshiping you, Lord. We just, uh, we want that to be every moment of our lives. So uh, just stir up your spirit in this place, Lord. Would this be a place that continually, continuously um, just honors you and um, shines your light. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So good. Yeah, so good. Well, you may all be seated. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. 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 I hang out over here. Uh, this Tyler, uh, Vanessa, Kekoa. Hi, so good to see you. How old are you now? Six. You're six? Wow, you're tall for being six. Yeah. But it's good to see you. And uh, I don't know if it's just because, you know, I haven't seen you for a little bit, but... I know the word of encouragement um, is from my heart, but I believe it's, you know, it's the Lord's heart for you. Is um, just He covers you, He loves you, and it's the no matter what, yeah, no matter what. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna give me hugs. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's, it's all good. But that's what I love about. Uh, I don't know how, how we live out authenticity and generosity and it's you know it's all different but I just I just love what just, know, being able to just be myself so I, I just uh, pray that you would just sense the covering uh, just the love of God for you no, no matter what you know, we all move outside anyway, don't give me yeah I don't know, just, I'll stop there yeah but yeah may the Lord encourage you with that that word and it's good to see you. Yeah, look forward to a little fellowship uh, after too. So, mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, I, I really believe the Lord's continuing to stir. He's never stopped stirring and moving. And uh, there are seasons I know in just our relationship with the Lord. But be obedient. Those online and those here, be obedient to just, you know, the Lord. If, if there's a word, a prayer, a gesture, you know, it's neighbor. Just... Being the church where we're at, right? Uh, when you guys go on vacation, and I know it's it's like yes, refresh you, enjoy one another, etc. But as the Lord leads, right? Whenever wherever we are, um, so yeah, just the Lord stir you to be obedient to, you know, just be Jesus to to one another. Amen. Yeah. Whew, that's bonus message. Good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, well, Shawnee's got a uh, couple of announcements, so, you know, I figure, hey, Shawnee's around, might as well, yeah, just kind of right. use her experience of 29 years. Shawnee, come and just share some uh, announcements, and then after the few announcements, uh, just pray, pray over us again, you know, the just ministry, just connection, relationships, yeah, as the Lord needs you. Sure. Hi guys, um, so if you don't already tune in to Day Church on Wednesdays at 10 to 10.30, pass a ride, rocking it, oh, it's good. all the way through the week. It's good, the Lord's using me, all my experience, 59 years. Yeah. 
it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yep. Anyways, um, so yeah, tune into that. It's on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, also, we have coming up another pizza prayer and praise in mm -hmm. a different order. Prayer, praise, and pizza on uh, August sixth. And it's been really awesome just being here under the Shima tent and hanging out. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I've never really enjoyed prayer as much as I have since I've, you know, communal, communal prayer. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's really so encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Auntie Shannon makes the best cookies. So. Oh, if uh, you're watching, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, and also if you want to join our prayer team um, or prayer phone team, we haven't officially like started calling and uh, doing that yet, but we are open to people joining. So please just email me and that's all I have. So uh, I'm gonna pray and then yeah. get into the good, best stuff. Uh, Jesus, hi again. We're just so grateful for um, just the, yes. thanks for the, this house and this mm. tent and all that you're doing here, Lord. I just feel it. Mm heavy peace and just your presence mm. um, being here, Lord. So thank you for the Shimas and their home and for making it your home, Lord. Um, we just pray for continued growth in relationship yes. in this body yes. and um, just healing, Lord, mm. through the prayers of your saints, Lord. And um, yeah, we just lift up this time to you and would you bless it and bless each one of us with just a word, um, some knowledge, mm. encouragement, uh, just something you want us to hear. Conviction, Lord. Yeah. Um, we receive it. We're open. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, son. Thank amen. you. Thank you. Yay. It's good. Uh, I also want to remind everyone, and again, this is the repetitive communication of us uh, working towards, planning, prepping towards our reopen at Midpack. And you guys get tired of hearing me saying, we've been open right, at, and having church, but, but I, totally, uh, I totally get it with you. It's gonna be a, just a different uh, season as we relaunch at Midpack on the 22nd. But I'm really encouraging you to those, especially uh, those who have volunteered leaders, but you're all welcome either in person or on Zoom. So if you're not on our email list for the leader volunteer, we just put you on. If you want to receive the Zoom link uh, to kind of tune in on that. So we're just giving updates and then having a time of a little devotional and training and then just updates on uh, you know, as we move forward to, to planning. So that's Wednesdays. And then just to highlight uh, people I've been asking, so where do you need help? Well, I need help in lots of areas, more ways than that. But where do we as a church, and it's, again, it's a, it's a we, right? It's not I, it's, it's we. And where do we need help? And so in this particular season, uh, we're all the Aloha team and servants and volunteers and so every ministry is just part of this aloha team and i really feel like the lord's stirring a just a an ongoing uh, unity of spirit and heart a renewing and refreshing of, of unity and so uh, greeters uh, definitely uh, greeters welcome check in and so those of you online you can kind of see see this and again we, we have been unpacking that on wednesdays and and we'll continue to uh, this Wednesday as well, right? So lots of places to, to get involved in. Again, I, I don't need to tell you, but it is a reminder for all of our hearts. It, it is a we, it's a family thing. So people say, what time does church start uh, Sunday when we go back to Midpack? I say, oh, 7.30. 7.30, you move the service. No, no, we have the place from 7.30 to 11.30. And service is like nine to 10 you know somewhere in there depending on me uh, <laughs> but but just cut come at 8 come at 7 30 come at 9 we'd love every you know everyone to be there at 9 but we want kind of the feel to be like just just come come in just be family uh, with us to celebrate Jesus together right so word prayer 
fellowship, uh, serving together. So uh, that's that's my thought for you. And then this is totally we don't we don't want to be just uh, a Sunday church, and we're not. Right? We're the church and reflecting Him where we're at. But we we are excited about starting uh, Ohana groups and using this curriculum from Rick Warren. Many of you are familiar with it. It is revised. Uh, the Purpose Driven Life, but revised, and, and he has a uh, six or seven week uh, a series on this. So we, uh, so someone donated uh, like ten sets. So we're looking for ten facilitators, shepherds, and just to facilitate, uh, you know, a an Ohana group, and and then also fifty books. So for participants, the donation of fifty books too. So. That's awesome, and we're gonna have one here under the tent and uh, all that. So more information about that, but I just want you to just be praying about that, right? Just to be connected, whether as part of an Ohana group or a faci facilitating one. And so we'll we'll talk more about that. You get training and and encouragement, so support, so you're, you're not alone in that. Look, get your notes out. Uh, it's on uh, Facebook as well. We posted it. And get your Bibles ready. Open your Bibles. And I want you to turn uh, to Ezra. But let me just give a quick overview. Uh, some takeaways that, that I've received from the book of Ezra as, as we kind of lean into this idea of restoring our identity. Because that's what part of uh, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, which is really like one, one book, uh, together is about like a restoration of the identity of the people of God and so there's freedom in God uh, by God for God for for even us as exiles he's he's brought us out of bondage into a life of freedom right we were once enslaved to the world of sin but sin is no longer our master we deal with it yeah we deal with it it's no longer our master you say Jesus you are Lord. And and repentance and obedience is required in relationship, right, with, with the Lord. And again, so in the book, and even in our lives, I believe that translates that story to our story. There are overwhelming challenges or situation. Some are facing some daunting odds. The odds are against the people of Israel, the odds may you see against me now in, in family, in this, in finances, whatever it might be. But there's hope in God. Everyone say hope in God. Say it at home. Hope in God. And we're we're never gonna escape. We're never gonna escape conflict. We're never gonna escape uh, challenges. Right. We're never gonna escape uh, corruption. That's around. But God is with us. Amen. Everyone say, God is with us. And He is faithful and He loves His people and He has tabernacled with us. He's come to dwell with us. So the, the picture of the tabernacle and the people working towards the rebuilding of the temple, uh, He is the temple that has been, as Jesus said, destroyed right, and raised again. And now we have become that temple. And he's tabernacled with this temple. And I believe it's inclusive. He's speaking of the church too, right? There's that both and. We're so individualistic. It's good. Yes, Jesus loves me. And then we consider, yes, we are the church. It's something to strength. And it's, it's the power of the family of God. And so I believe the Lord... Just lay this on my heart with specific intention, some parallels to relaunching at Midpac. For us, who are we as a Manoa church and family? Uh, and there are principles in this book that have just come alive through the time. Just last week with our brother Tiago and Shani, and, and today we have Mel. But in your notes, I want to start off with the scripture Ezra 1.5. And I'm going to read this. Uh, well, read this with me, and at home, read it out, read it out loud, okay? All of us read together, ready, go. Then rose up the heads of the fathers, houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and Levites, 
everyone whose spirit God had stirred to go up to rebuild the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. God is still stirring spirits, isn't he? God is, God is still talking, convicting. He's still moving. That he's with us. He's still stirring spirits. And I, and I believe as we talk about building this sort of authentic and generous kind of life, uh, underlined there, whose spirit God had stirred. It seems like anything that God builds, especially as we zero in on this sort of authentic, uh, generous life, it takes the stirring of the Spirit. It takes the initiative of God. Because I think, I don't know, Shani alluded to it. I, I can, well, in my words, I can sort of fake my way through things. Um, I, I don't intend to in a message or in worship. I don't feel it. I haven't prepared as well as I should have. And, you know, I, I just don't want to mask my way through life. Right? And authenticity, like genuineness, I believe it's just really going to come from an authentic stirring of the Lord. Now I get it, sometimes faith, like we don't feel it, we don't sense the stirring, we don't, but we're going to like walk out what God has put in our hearts through teaching, through reminders. Oh, someone, uh, someone's encouraged, I don't feel it, I'm not in the place that I, I'm, I feel authentic or generous or in, in this life with Christ, but there's an example right next to me. And sometimes we're just going to like by faith. Put on Christ. But I believe that the Lord wants to stir this authenticity, return back to kind of a genuineness, uh, a vulnerableness, authenticity uh, in Him. So I, I just ask you this in regards to that passage. What is the Lord stirring within you? It could be A to Z, but what is the Lord stirring? What is he speaking to you about? Your spiritual relationship, relationships here, things going on at work, health, different. But, but what's he saying even in and through it? What's the Lord saying? Lord, stir our hearts. Stir our hearts. And we pray that the Lord would stir us back to like simply Jesus. Like an authentic relationship uh, with him. And I see here just... Uh, a point before Mel, so I'm going to have Mel come up. But I see here that there's a stirring for God's purposes, right? You see that. Whose spirit God had stirred to what? To go up and rebuild. I want to say in regards to relaunching uh, on the 22nd and the preparation towards it. There is a rebuilding. There is planning. There is work to be done. And so what's the Lord stirring in light of your involvement? If you're committed to the family of God here, right, what's the Lord stirring? And it, it, so again, it may be, a it may just be, you know, in my season now, I can't really offer my hands or being around such and such, but there's a commitment to a generous prayer life or generous encouragement where you're at. What's the Lord stirring in your heart? Oh, Sister Mel. Come on. Just welcome Sister Mel. Yay. So Mel, just share on your... We, so we've been in touch. She's such a, a great, gifted sort of writer and expresses through that. She sent an email, some thoughts, and... I had asked her before, hey, would you consider just tag teaming? And, and then she just started to get into Ezra, but and then she sent this. And I actually said, no, I'd like to speak on that, what you said, like building. And she's the one that sort of came up with that authentic, generous uh, theme. So, all yours, sister. <laughs> wow. Um, so good to be with you guys in Jesus. Um, 
uh, it's just such a joy learning through Ezra. I, I shared with him that Ezra wasn't like a book that I was very interested in, but as you know, I read and studied, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit, he just reveals so much. And I, I love Ezra, I love that book now. Um, but before we get into what the Lord placed on my heart, I was wondering if we could do an activation. So um, if you guys could close your eyes. Can before, oh. what is activation? Oh, okay, okay. Because that may be yeah. new for, for some people. What does that mean, activation? Okay. So an activation is, is just like an activity to posture our hearts mm -hmm. to receiving um, the word more deeply. I mean, um, okay. just just to invite his presence in more. It, it's just going to be like something where we imagine yeah. and um, just to help Good. prepare our hearts Good. more. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, so yeah, if you guys could close your eyes, there's going to be two parts. Um, the first part is right now, if you could just imagine that you're going to meet with a close friend at a coffee shop and um, you can't wait to tell your friend about what's happening in, in your life and um, you're excited to hear about what's happening in their life and what's on their heart. You're just so excited to hang out with this friend and spend time together. So yeah. Imagine yourself with this friend. Okay, and then here's the, the second part. This is going to be different. So now imagine that um, there's Jesus waiting for you at the coffee shop. And he's waiting there for you. And he's the, the king himself. He's the bridegroom. He's the one who gave it all. And what do you say to him? What do you guys talk about? Um, do you fall on your knees? Do you embrace him like never before? Um, do you feel broken because maybe you've not been spending much time with him? Uh, is he someone that you meet with so often that you can sense his presence mm -hmm. so well? Okay, you guys can open your eyes. And um, as mentioned, this is just like a moment to posture our hearts because we we don't want to have a mind like Martha. We, we just want to like mm. be at his feet right now, like Mary. And um, yeah, we, we just want to be sure that we're here for Jesus. That's why we're here. And we honor him. He sits right here with us. He's here with us. And worship doesn't end when the music stops. Amen. It's just yes. going as we're in the word right now. So just want to really be sure that we're aware of his presence right now. Mm. So Ezra, such a gift in the Old Testament. Mm. And just want to share um, before going into generosity and authenticity that the Old Testament is always paving a way for Jesus. You know, the Old Testament is always sharing how much we need him and the new covenant, and it's always pointing to Christ and how we truly need grace through faith in Jesus. So um, even though the book is titled Ezra, he doesn't actually come in till chapter seven of the 10 chapters. Uh, Zerubbabel, you know, he first leads the exiles to rebuild the temple, and then Ezra leads the next return to help to rebuild the hearts of the people. So throughout, the generations then until now there's always heart issues and we've always got to be rebuilding pure devotion mm. to Jesus mm. because of that and he builds up his church by building himself into us um, so awesome that today we are his church mm -hmm. um, so yeah so the two words that the Lord shared through Ezra where we're building together is generosity and authenticity just personally mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so in your notes, there's Ezra 269 to 268 uh, uh, to 269. Um, we're going to start with generosity through that scripture. When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings toward the rebuilding of the house of God on its site. According to their ability, they gave to the treasury for this work 61,000 jerks of gold, 5,000 minutes of silver and 100 priestly garments. So the Israelites gave gifts that would be used to rebuild the temple and they gave generously. When we think of generosity, we often think of giving finances, talents, gifts, time. 
and God does ask us to be generous mm -hmm. and share what he gives us. My husband wanted me to share this story with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a whole bunch of leftovers in our home and it couldn't fit in our refrigerator. And we could give to our neighbors, but it was just put on our heart to give to a homeless person. So my kids and I got in the car and we were just driving around. <laughs> and and I, I saw a bunch of people, but that, and, and then Holy Spirit highlighted this homeless man. And he was in a, uh, he was uh, pushing a cart and he had this big beard and he was like so sad looking and just so oppressed looking. And, and then I, I pulled by McDonald's on King Street, you know, the, by the library, the Macaulay Mo'ili Ili Library, and then rolled down the passenger side of the window and, and I stuck out the bag of food. And then he saw and his whole face just like transformed into mm, wow. so much joy and his, his smile was so big and there was a, a man that was at a bus stop nearby and he took off his mask and he spouted and he gave me a shaka. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, you know, like that doesn't seem like a lot. It was just our leftovers. But when we give what we have in generosity, um, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. We just have so many different ways we can give. Mm -hmm. And being generous blesses others and shows love to people and Jesus. And, you know, after I gave to that man, I, I heard the Lord say so clearly, what you did for him, you did for me. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it, it really blesses the Lord's heart. So even if you don't have much, just be faithful in whatever you have, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you're at. And so let's keep our gaze on Jesus. Generosity is the nature of our Godhead. And um, I mean, look at how generous our Godhead is. Our Father gave his only Son, Jesus. Jesus gave us his all, abundant life. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit gives us to be fruitful and generous ourselves. And uh, he, he gives us to be radically generous. And for us to be generous is to be like our Father in heaven. It's an expression of his love. Uh, being generous comes from a mindset that we have more than enough because we know and trust who our Father is. And knowing who we are affects what we do. So this is an example. I hope you guys see it. So if we were at our dad's house, like like our earth dad, and we wanted something to eat, he would probably say, just go to the kitchen, get whatever you want, just help yourself. And we would, because we're the kid, you know? Like, it's, it's who we are. And like, what's his is ours. And it's like a privilege just to be the kid. If we were at a friend's house, it would be so different. We'd, I don't know, I, I guess for me, I would not even want to ask. It's just not the same as our dad. And if I did ask, I probably would, would not be as comfortable. I wouldn't, I would only get like a snack or something. But you know, if it's your own dad, because of our identity as a son or daughter, it's just what's his is ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sorry. you know, that's how our father in heaven is. He's so generous and generosity is a key in building his church. But if we don't do things with love, then it's like we're a noisy gong or clanging symbol, like 1 Corinthians 13, 1, um, which brings us to authenticity. So um, authenticity means to live how God desires us to. And in your notes, there's Ezra 7, 10. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah are connected. So later in Nehemiah, Ezra gathers the Israelites to renew a covenant so that they would reach and uh, preach God's word. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna, it's not in your notes, but it's Nehemiah 8.8. 8, and it says, they read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. And the, the rabbis at the time, they considered Ezra like another Moses. Uh, so awesome to be learning from him. Coming back to now, we live in a time where there's so many filters and there's like so many ways to edit things. There's fear and confusion all around. And 
how do we combat this and come together? How do we stay true to our identity in Christ? And we stay devoted in the word like Ezra. Mm -hmm. what we do. We don't keep it to ourselves. Ezra went and taught the word. So wherever God places us, we can be a minister of his truth. And we don't need to have a veil over us. Because mm -hmm. yeah. for us in Christ, he already tore the veil for us. So we already are loved and accepted by our Father. We don't need man's approval. We do everything from the approval mm -hmm. of our daddy, daddy God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, we need the power of God himself through his word. Amen. Yeah. So true authenticity and generosity it happens when we follow Jesus daily. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so have authentic faith. We, we must be hearers and doers and lovers of mm -hmm. the word. And then we will live his word and we'll be bursting to share his word. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I was just telling Rod, you know, let's passionately meditate on his word day and night. Mm -hmm. And ultimately our example for all is Jesus. Yeah. You know, an authentic and generous church is essential to his plans. Mm -hmm. So some questions you can ask yourself. What has he given you to build his church? How are you authentically sharing his word? And is your mindset filled with lack or like generous abundance? Mm. And God is doing new things. And something one of my teachers said when I was in school, he said, find out what God is doing in your generation and jump in. Mm. <laughs> that really stuck with me. Because mm. um, Christ is in us. He's the hope of glory. And... Um, we're truly the church. It's up to us to step up all for his glory. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's good. Can you I don't know, just just pray pray over us in that, whatever the Lord as you've shared. Uh, yeah, just open Open our hearts as as Mel's praying. Whatever she she prays, uh, yeah. Let's yeah. Let's just pray to the Lord. Just maybe answering some of those questions, or you know, considering what what the Lord spoke uh, to and through her. But go ahead, Mel. Just posture our hearts. Oh God, you're good. Yes. Good. Heavenly Father, mm. Jesus, our Lord. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you so much that yeah. your word is alive. Yes. That yes. we're your sheep, so we hear your voice. Yes. So I just yeah. ask, Father, that you would speak to your kids right now. Mm -hmm. Just speak to them and just pour into them, pour into their hearts. And yeah, God, let them hear you for themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're learning from you about authenticity and generosity because mm -hmm. those are keys. Those are keys that you have given us to build with you. Mm -hmm. And we just take so much joy that we get to be with you in mm -hmm. your kingdom to just keep on growing together all for your glory. Mm -hmm. yes, God. And Lord, yes. yeah, Lord, there's just a lot that distracts us from what you really want us to be building so we come against all of that right now and we mm -hmm. just seek your face mm -hmm. we just seek your face and we thank you that you chase after us and that you are so passionately here for us mm -hmm. right now we love you we thank you we thank you that yes. we are your children yes. we love you so much father in jesus name we pray Yes. Amen. 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 Woo. Oh, so good. So good. Well, I just, uh, when she did that activation uh, thing, and I've experienced that in the past, so I want, that's why I wanted her to kind of explain that. If you've never done that, you know, it's just, it, it is a way to sort of imagine in God. Right? Just imagine in God. And it's meant to, well, at least uh, one aspect. It's I'm just just meant to draw us near and, and say, God, you're present. And uh, and so, 
my experience was I was with a brother at the coffee shop and, and she had the second part of Jesus the King being there and I'm like I know this you know we're all different yeah but I was like oh I just got up and like oh Jesus oh yeah and like I saw heads turning at Honolulu coffee shop where I'm there and with my brother and we're like Oh, I just hug it and come sit down. Well, I'm gonna buy you one coffee. And we just, anyway, that was my experience. Awesome. And it was it was reverent, so I know it's. But you know, there's again uh, different experiences we have in the Lord, you know, and just who is Jesus? Who is Jesus in that? In your notes, um, Ezra three, one says, when the seventh month came and the children of Israel were in the towns, the people gathered as one man to Jerusalem. And I note that. So they gathered together, they came, they gathered as one. Then arose Jeshua, the son of Josadak, with his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, and the son of Shealtiel, with his kinsmen, and they built the altar of of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it as it is written in the law of Moses the man of God they gathered as one is what stood out and they built the altar right? before laying the foundation they built the altar and what does the altar of God represent so again it's not the like the Ark of the Covenant Holy of Holies I mean that's the presence of God but the altar of God I mean, it's a so place where sin is dealt with. Sin is dealt with. And it, it's a place of like, preparation, right? More for preparing our hearts as we offer sacrifice, right? And yes, God is with us and in us, and the presence of God uh, is, is here, is here. But my thought, just for us, in building our life with the Lord and specific to authenticity and generosity. He's so generous in love as we meet him at the place of the altar. As, as we meet him in repentance and revering him. Holy, there is no one like you. And you know me, all my quirks, faults, the inner dark closets and you're generous at the altar when I come. And I believe the Lord's saying to us, it's like we come as one. We come as one. And we support one another as we approach the altar of like repentance, brokenness, sacrifices, right? In in fellowship and I want to I want to throw this out at you it's not in your notes Matthew 5 23 24 right consider this as we build this sort of authentic and generous life this is an inward thing Matthew 5 23 if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go. Well, it's a whole different altar scenario, isn't it? It's like, God, I love you. I'm, re I'm just repenting and I'm bringing my, the sacrifices of... And the Lord speaks and like, hey, you got gifts for me. But leave your gift, leave your gift right here for me. And go first be reconciled to your brother and then come to offer your gift. So I believe in going to the altar of God, forgiveness. He forgives, right? But there are Christian human times and experiences. The Lord's saying, Rod, leave your gift. You got to settle. You got to settle. You got to settle this. There's an obedience to this repentant heart. Oh, I have a repentant heart with Jesus. And then the Lord may be 
it's so important in rebuilding life relationship lord lead us to rekindle to renew to repent towards right reconciling I just offer that thought in light of building this life of authenticity. The Lord may be calling us to restore. Yeah, with Him, but restore. Maybe family, maybe wherever it may be. Is the Lord speaking to you in that? What's He stirring in your heart? And then Ezra 6, Ezra 6, verses, uh, or Ezra 3, verse 6 and 7. It says, from the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. All right, so it's still not yet laid. Read with me verse 7. Ready? Go. So they gave money to the masons and the carpenters and food and drink and oil to the Sidonians and the Tyrians to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea. To Joppa, according to the grant they had from Cyrus, the king of Persia. There's certainly a, a historical kind of context you read in that passage. But as it translates from that story to our story, I just want to suggest to our hearts. Hmm. They gave. This is not a pass the bucket kind of time and taking a second offering or first or third or... Uh, but I will share this. In Corinthians, so if you're taking notes, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 uh, through 9. I'm going to read this. So meditate on this. We think about uh, sort of rebuilding with generosity. And I'm looking, I'm just thinking, oh, it just came to mind as you're talking generosity. Oh, generosity, generosity. I mean, it's just, there's such generous people in the way you give of yourselves. I mean, I just, all over, generosity, generosity. But as I read this, what is the Lord stirring in you? Again, whether it's finances, whether it's time, talent, treasure, Maybe it's something spiritual, right? Maybe it's something relational in, in that one. Verse 6, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his, what, bank account, in his home, in his refrigerator. That's awesome leftovers. You know, it's good. It's good. I'm not downing that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Each one must give as he has decided, not to the outward, but what's in your heart. Let me pause there. I'm. I'm. I'm going off. Rod, stop judging. Don't judge others. What they give, don't give. Whatever. I mean, finances. This. How generous they are. No. 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 Look, Rod. You focus on your heart and how are you giving. I feel like I'm a generous person. Yeah, honey? <laughs> I feel like I'm generous and have qualities of generosity. And so do all of you. Right? But I know, man, I got some selfish areas. And I'm like, oh, don't go there, Lord. Yeah, don't go there. The Lord's stirring a couple of things. Rod, be careful not to just sow sparingly with your time and life. I've given you health. I've given you time. Lord, I'm tired. I'm stretched. I'm not... Oh, anyway, so that, that's my practical. <laughs> There's some things stirring in my heart. So, verse 7, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under guilt, compulsion, for God loves what? A cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Wow. And as it is written, He has freely distributed freely. He has given to the poor. 
His righteousness endures forever. Thank you, by the way, for sharing that story. It's like we consider those needy around us. So that's why, I mean, even show God, show, uh, show God share aloha, right? Just to minister those needs around us and our community, our household. We still have that going, by the way. So, you know, it's like who, who within our church family has need? Right? So let's go find out, or if that's you, then it's, yeah, we just we share. With, with, yeah. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I'm going to, I'm going to pause there. I want to share something that I got from uh, Linda. I'm not sure if she's tuning in now, Linda Masuda. She sent me an email, and then it, there was a little uh, sort of saying, you know, on the bottom. You know, sometimes we put different sayings. But she had this, uh, there's a big difference between being led by God and manipulated by man. Think of authenticity or generosity as we build life. And God, help me not to be a manipulator, coerce, you know, leaders, pastors, this, uh, just in family, as a husband. <laughs> I want to be led by you, stirred by you. Okay, I'm adding. So if God is leading, there will be, so this is peace, not pressure. Grace, not guilt. The fruit of a spirit, like Shawnee kind of pointed us back to, not fights. <laughs> Hope, not heaviness. Clarity, not confusion in that and then I added some of my own little it's going to be faith not flight generosity not greed authenticity not I didn't finish that one I was looking for another A word artificial artificial Loretta <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't fill it in. Art of often just whoa. And let's close in prayer with that. Lord, we don't want to be artificial <laughs> followers and disciples. So Lord, thank you for grace, because we all I think identify we we can be, we have been, we've masked, we've we've sort of faked our way through some things, but Lord, thank you for the genuineness of your spirit that we identify with, because there is a stirring in our spirits by your Holy Spirit in us to just build this spiritual life with you first. Lord, a genuine, authentic kind of relationship with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Ah, so Lord, just lead us in prayer. Lead us in repentance. And lead us in obedience, Lord. Whatever the words that you've spoken to us in each of our lives. And then as a church, Lord, as we're rebuilding and planning and all of that. Lord, I just rest in the word you gave me and that you speak. You are the builder. Now let us, we, I'm just to love and shepherd. So thank you. Thank you for the body and the family of God. This is our church <laughs> because we are your church. So we thank you. We love you. We red rededicate our lives. Someone online or maybe you just you're on Facebook and it's two days later, whatever, and it's, you're at this point, just ask, Jesus, fill me, renew me. I rededicate my life. I receive you as Lord and as Savior, as the King of my heart. Lord, we all do that as your family. We thank you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we say, Amen. 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 Yes. Oh, God's good. God's good.
Thank you so much. Hey, those uh, online, Cyrus, could you, the, yeah, that's right. So just discuss uh, amongst your family, who you're with. Uh, if it's just you and Jesus, talk to him, text, call, FaceTime. Uh, someone, we're just going to have a, a time of sharing now, uh, answering this. So God bless you. Love you guys.